While there is plenty of great tutorials out there on how to create crystals in Blender, I actually wanted to combine everything that I liked from a few of my favorites and modify those nodes and combine and mix them together to create what I think is a great crystal shader, especially if you're a beginner and you don't feel like getting into the nodes. I set up a group inputs so that you guys can actually go in and adjust all of these settings yourself. Uh, they're clearly labeled and very easy to use. So before we go ahead and get into how to create the crystals, the shader, the environment, and the scene, I actually just wanna show you what this shader is capable of and the actual adjustments that you can make on it very easily just using the little editor on the right here. What's really great about this is that if you do have knowledge on nodes, you can actually go in and make fine adjustments yourself, but I made it super easy for you guys to easily adjust everything on the right. So if I just wanted to simply change the color, I could easily do that just by changing the top color there. Now, of course, you can change the bottom color as well. And basically what I added was just a nice gradient so that you can go from one color to the next. Now, let's say you really don't want any color at all. That's totally fine. You can completely desaturate your crystal. Now, of course, you're probably seeing some color still, and that's coming from the dispersion that I mixed in. So our dispersion mixer here, if I just turn that down, now you have no dispersion at all and you have a completely clear crystal. The only color that's coming from the crystal now is the actual environment texture here. Now, another really useful feature that I added in here is the actual gradient positioning. So as you can see, in real time, I can just adjust my gradient. If I just want just the top of the crystal to have that slight purple hue, I can do that by adjusting the Z position of the gradient. And of course, there are other options at the bottom here. I just thought this was the most important, so I put it towards the top. There are so many awesome little features packed in here for you guys, such as changing the overall hue of the crystal. So let's say you did like the gradient that you had, but you just wanted to slightly change the hue to kind of mess with that. Easy to do. Scratch density, scratch scale, dent scale, clarity, the smaller dents, the bigger displacement, edge randomness. There are so many great little details in here that you can adjust to get the perfect crystal that you want. So now I'm gonna show you how to create crystals from scratch in terms of just the modeling, and then I'll go ahead and overview the nodes and the environment setup. As with all projects, we're gonna go ahead and start a new project and go ahead and delete the default cube and the light. Now there's two main ways that I'm gonna show you how to create crystals that I found worked great. The first one is using an icosphere. So go ahead and add in a icosphere here. And before doing anything else, make sure you click this drop down and just give that one subdivision so we have less geometry to work with here. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm actually gonna tab into edit mode and I'm just gonna adjust these vertices on the fly to make them look a way that I think looks cool. I'm gonna to go to my side view here and just kind of adjust these. Move them around, I can scale them up. I'm using G and S to scale. I think that looks pretty cool. Now, of course, you can go down here and make it even flatter if you want. It's totally up to you how you wanna make your crystal look. I think this is the easiest way to just create a crystal from scratch. And now our last step is we're just gonna add a little bevel modifier. I'm gonna give that 10 segments, and then we're gonna create a, an amount of 0.01, see kinda how that looks, because we don't wanna have perfectly um, squared off edges. We actually wanna have those round edges to create a little bit more realism, because objects in real life don't have perfect corners. Uh, most things are rounded. So this looks really good. We can go ahead and work with that. I'm gonna show you one more way to create a crystal from scratch. We're gonna add in a sphere here. So add in a sphere. I'm just gonna move it out of the way. And I'm actually gonna add a displacement modifier to that, create a new displacement texture. And then within my, my texture panel, I'm gonna create a Voronoi texture. As you can see, it's already starting to look like a crystal. And now if we go back to our modifiers tab, I'm actually gonna go ahead and add a bevel in here. Again, I'm gonna give it a very small bevel of 0 0.02 this time, and then 10 segments. And then we actually wanna go ahead and apply both of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply both modifiers. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my side view here, tab into edit mode. I wanna make sure that x-ray mode is turned on. I'm gonna highlight all these bottom vertices, and then I'm gonna use a shortcut, SZ0. And what that's gonna do is scale all of our um, coordinates to zero, all of our vertices. I'm gonna scale them in just a little bit and G, Z to bring them up on the Z axis. And now if we tab out of edit mode, you can see we have this nice crystal formation right here. Of course, you can use any shape to do this with the displacement modifier. I think that looks really nice. And of course, you can go back into edit mode. You can easily move things around the way that you want them, scale them back down. You can pretty much do anything you want. Now, I've made a few small modifications to our crystal that we're gonna be working with here, uh, but let's go ahead and set up the scene. So we wanna make sure that we are in cycles today. 
We're just gonna click on our GPU and then I'm gonna add an environment texture in here. Let's go ahead and add an environment texture. We're gonna open up my HDRI files and we're gonna go ahead and use this one right here, which you can find on Polyhaven. I will link it in the description below. Let's go to our render view and just see what we're working with. It looks like our environment has correctly been installed. So I'm gonna snap back to camera view here. Now, something that I always love to do in almost all of my projects is go ahead and just add an empty plane axis in here. I'm just gonna scale that up and I'm actually gonna parent my camera to the empty. So that way, if I wanna easily change the angle of my scene, all I have to do is rotate my empty. And as you can see, the camera stays in place and just rotates 360 around our object. So that's just a nice quick way to test different angles within your scene. I'm also gonna go ahead and click on my camera and just lower uh, lower the view. I'm gonna set it to 90 degrees and just lower it on the Z axis so we have a nice flat view of our object here. Now in our camera settings, I'm gonna give this 100 millimeter focal length and then I'm also going to create some depth of field and go ahead and select our actual object. Uh, for the f-stop, I'm gonna give that 0.4 for now. We'll see how that looks. And then I'm just gonna back the camera up away from our scene here. Still keeping our object in the center, that looks pretty good. Now if we go over to rendered view, it looks like we have a nice blurred background, which is what we're looking for. And I think I want the sun to be sort of behind our object, like right about there. So you can see the light coming through the crystal really nicely. Um, I'm just gonna back out behind our scene here and we're just gonna go ahead and add in a plane here. We're gonna scale it up really, really big like that. And we're gonna go ahead to object apply scale. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and I'm gonna subdivide this quite a few times here. Now we're gonna add a displacement modifier. So let's go ahead and add a displacement, create a new displacement texture, and then we're just gonna use clouds for right now. That looks pretty good. Maybe we'll try Voronoi or Stucky, maybe even Magic. Doesn't really matter, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna add a subdivision surface modifier. And what we wanna do is just kinda of create these nice wavy hills for this nice environment. And of course, I'm gonna up those subdivisions and I'm gonna right click, shade smooth. Now we just need to reposition everything so that our scene kind of makes sense here. Right now our camera's completely covered, so I'm actually gonna click GZ to bring this down here. There we go, that's a lot better. I'm gonna scale it up and I'm just gonna rotate it around until it kind of makes more sense for our scene. Maybe scale it up just a little bit more, bring it down. I like the way that's starting to look right there. If we go into our render view, we can see that things are starting to look really interesting. So we have a nice little scene set up here. And of course you can modify anything that you've liked so far. The displacement modifier is totally up to you. I just thought this looked kind of cool for our scene. Even that looks pretty nice too. So you can adjust all the rotation values, anything you want. This is just me setting up a scene that I think looks cool. Quick shout out to Ducky3D for making this awesome real-time materials pack. I'm actually gonna go in here and just grab a quick rock texture and import it into our other scene so that we can have a nice rock formation under our crystal. Popping back into render view here, you'll see that I've applied this nice shader to our scene here. And I'm just gonna make a few fine adjustments and go ahead and speed that up. But like I said, shout out to Ducky. Awesome little material options here. Um, you can easily adjust all of his materials as well. I'm just gonna create slightly darker material. And I think looks really nice for our scene. I really, really like that. So I think that looks really good. Let's go ahead and add in some more elements to our scene. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, before I get into the actual shader for the crystal, I'm just gonna give this a quick glass shader so we can kind of see, visualize what it's gonna look like within our composition. Um, I'm gonna duplicate it a few times and then we're gonna go ahead, make some rocks and then we'll get right into the glass shader. As you can see, I've spread out a few crystals amongst the scene, scaled them and rearranged them in a way that I think looks really compositionally cool. Now I'm just gonna create a few primitives for the rocks and just kind of give those some displacement. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this part up as well. And then I'm gonna apply the same texture that we have for the floor. As you can see, just like that, I've created this very, very cool scene not doing much work, just kind of moving things around, duplicating them, changing the scale and sizing. Uh, a little trick that I like to do is if we go into the camera here and we go into viewport display, turn the pass part out up. So what that's gonna do is kind of create this black border around everything so you can actually see and narrow in on what our frame's gonna look like without seeing all of that outside imagery. I just like to do this because I think it's easier to set up the scene. I'm gonna go ahead and copy our material that I've created over to this scene to show you what it's gonna look like. And then I'm gonna go over all of the nodes and what they're actually doing. So I've copied over the crystal with the shader from the other project. And as you can see right here, it's looking really cool. I'm just gonna change it to purple real quick. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and show you how to copy it over to everything else. So our hue is set, it should be 0.5, I think that's the default. There we go, that's looking really good. So now if we want to copy this over to all of our other crystal objects very easily, we want to click on each object while holding shift, and then the last object we click on, we want it to be the shader that we're trying to copy. And then control L, and then go ahead and just click on link materials. And what that's going to do is that's going to copy over our shader to all of the things that we just had selected. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm just going to rotate our um, our crystal here just a little bit to make it look a little bit nicer. I think that looks pretty cool. And now I'm going to go into the nodes and kind of show you what is actually happening behind the scenes here. When you guys open the file from Gumroad, you're actually going to see something like this. So here's our actual node group that is controlling pretty much everything. If you click on that, we're going to go ahead and tab into that. And it's going to break down basically every box that you see is something different happening with the shader. So I'm going to go over each one of those boxes right now and explain what is actually happening. We're not going to go ahead and do this individually because this took me hours and hours to create. So I'm not going to show you from scratch how to create this, but I am going to zoom in, show you every node, of course, provide the file for free. So let's go ahead and jump into what is actually happening here. So zooming in on the left side first, right here we have our user inputs. And basically what this is, is just a group input node. And when you go ahead and select your material on the right hand side here, where you see all these options, that is what that is right there. So basically, we just plug those into the values that we want to change. And when you go ahead and select your material, you'll be able to more easily hand select each value and adjust it on the fly. If we scroll over to the right here, you'll see all of these divide nodes. What is that? Why are we using math here? The reason we're using these divide nodes is to give you more precision adjustment over each of your values. So for example, if we have our dispersion value, typically you would use a dispersion of 0.1 up to maybe two or more. But in this case, you're actually going to be able to more fine tune that without having to have that quick jump. So it's actually just giving you, this is your normal range. It's just giving you this type of range. So you just have more room to work with and fine tune everything. So that's what's going on right there. Now, moving up to our top section here, this is where the actual scratches are coming in. So at the end, we have everything being mixed together, but each thing is separated into its own uh, box so that you guys can kind of understand what's actually happening and go in here and adjust everything for yourself. Uh, but basically, I, I looked at a couple different scratchy surfaces for crystal tutorials, and I found a lot of different things being used, and I just decided to combine the best of all of those worlds and create this right here. So there's a few references that I included right here that I will also include in the description below. But basically this is where all the scratches are happening right here. You can easily adjust any of this yourself. This is just what I chose to go with. Now if we scroll down here to our gradient color, this I created from scratch just based on my own node knowledge. Uh, basically all it is is color ramp, gradient texture, and we're kind of just mixing that into a hue and saturation value. So you can easily change these colors for yourself. Now if we go ahead and zoom in on the crystal up here, you'll see that if you adjust these values, you can adjust the way that the gradient fades. So you guys feel free to go in here and adjust this to your liking. Yes, you can add more colors. I just chose to go with these two because I thought they looked really nice. Next we have our displacement and our dents. So if you scroll down here, here's our reference for the dents and the displacement. I went ahead and took a few nodes from another project tweak them just a little bit to my liking, and I also mix those in with our final shader. So again, you can go in here, you can adjust all your bump nodes, your noise textures, your coordinates. Feel free to adjust anything you want. The shader is free, so you guys can literally do anything you want with it. Um, and let's go ahead and move on to the dispersion. So over here we have our dispersion. This is from an awesome glass dispersion shader that I found online. I'm gonna go ahead and link the YouTube tutorial for that. Uh, basically, that's just its whole own node group. It's super complex, but uh, if you guys want to follow that tutorial, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and credit the original creator of that as well. And I wanted to include that so that you guys could get more color out of your crystal shader. So now towards the end here, we just have everything being mixed together. So we have a couple of mixed shaders going into each other and then out into our group output that will actually go onto our material right there. So. Yes, it seems really complex, but I tried to break it down and simplify it so you guys could easily understand it. If you wanted to have more fine-tuned control over this shader, you can go ahead and create your own user input, and you can basically click and drag this line into any part of any node that you want. You can label it as you want, and then you can adjust it as you want. So all I did was I selected the key features that I thought were the most important when it comes to creating a crystal. I hope you guys really like this. I worked really hard on this. 
Again, sorry that I'm not going into the nodes uh, more detailed, but I hope that I zoomed in enough. I'll go ahead and pan through them one more time. I'm gonna try to create a high res screenshot of the nodes. So if you really do wanna get practice and set them up yourself, that's totally fine. Like I said, I pretty much went through a bunch of tutorials, found what I thought was working really well, and I combined them into my shader. So I just think this is gonna be an awesome shader. I think the community is gonna love it. Um, there's a lot going on here, but you know you get a great result in the end. Uh, so guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe, please share this with your friends. I really enjoyed making this. It took me hours and hours to put this all together, um, but I hope you love it. And I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Take care.